So good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining uh, Fortinet and CNS's virtual session today, which is powered by Reddington. Today's topic we have on secure SD WAN for cloud and branch transformation, and we have uh, Farhan from CNS who will be delivering the session along with Farhan. We have Farvez from Fortinet and Josefa from Reddington who will also be part of the session today. Uh, thank you again, and Farhan, I think you can begin. Thank you. Thank you for you know. Uh giving the floor to me uh, welcome guys welcome for the session uh, i hope you know the session will be uh, fruitful and beneficial for you to understand how you can utilize secure sd wan for your cloud and branch transformation so i'll begin with the introduction with the agenda so in the agenda we will be you know giving a brief introduction you know of sd wan We'll be discussing challenges and organization faces in current scenarios. We'll be, you know, uh, discussing about solution offering, how Fortinet Security SD WAN can enable enterprises with a secure, agile, intelligent SD WAN. We'll be discussing use cases, how you can improve application performance, how you can enhance security, and how you can simplify and automate your operations. As a cherry on top, we'll be discussing, you know, how you can extend your secure SD WAN to a SD branch environment. We'll be doing at the end a live SD WAN demo, and we'll have a Q and A session at the end of the session. Uh, as already, you know, brief. Uh, we, my name is, you know, Farhan Ashraf. I am, you know, CNS Cybersecurity Practice Lead. Along with me is Parvez from Fortinet. He is senior system uh, systems engineer. We have Josefa from Reddington. He is senior security consultant. A brief overview of CNS. CNS is in the market from last 30 years. We are part of Gobash Group, so we have the financial capacity to deliver any size uh, you know project. We have proven track record of delivering you know any size project. Uh, recently, we have completed the, uh, one of the largest deployment of SD WAN in UAE. We are part of the best security vendors in the market. We provide 24 by 7 support through our NOC. We have around 320 employees in our organization. Apart from that, we do, you know, have our in house software development team that can, you know, build uh, innovative digital uh, solutions for you. We are basically based in UAE, Oman, and Kuwait. So what kind of you know, techno, you know, solutions uh, CNS provides? We provide digital infrastructure solutions. We provide cyber security solutions. We provide emerging, emerging attack solutions. We do you know, cloud solutions. We do data analytics solutions. We do digital experience platform solutions. Apart from that, we have a complete you know, separate division uh, that provides uh, that provides digital banking solutions. So there is a host of you know banking solution that we provide. I'm not going to go into details because it is not the uh, the subject matter. Apart from that, we have a complete set of uh, engineering team that does projects and uh, postal support. We do have a managed services team that does, you know, managed services solution for you. And we provide IT outsourcing as well. Now, I'll come back to, you know, the, dis uh, the, the topic of discussion. Typically, in any organization, uh, if you, you might agree with, with what I'm showing you here, uh, most of the organizations, they are using MPLS to connect their branches to their head office. And, you know, they are using, you know, internet from their head office to connect to, to you know, cloud. What's the problem in this kind of, you know, environment, in this kind of architecture? It is complex. It is less agile. It is high, you know, in cost on the van side. So how? So what we are proposing? We are proposing secure SD WAN for connecting your cloud and branches. So how does it transform your, you know, connectivity? Instead of using high cost MPLS link, you can replace those links with low cost ADSL connection, with low cost 4G LTE 
uh, connections and you can bundle uh, bundle them together to provide connectivity from your branches to your head office as well as connectivity to the cloud if you are going for cloud transformations what are the drivers for secure sd wan architecture generally digital transformation your company requires for wan automation your company want to basically go uh, to have a go to cloud strategy or you want to basically save money from the uh, you know very costly slow and restrictive mpls connection what are the benefit benefit of secure sd wan architecture it provides you know business growth making a branch cloud ready and achieve you know and, and uh, enable you to achieve uh, three times higher performance it helps you reduce your wan cost approximately 40% or more you can reduce your wan cost as compared to current mpls connectivity high efficiency means you can you can prioritize key business applications and can achieve 50% more higher efficiency the solution is very simple scalable you know and manageable it reduces the time uh, of deployment and operations from week to minutes across multiple locations so this is generally you know the brief introduction of of uh, you know uh, what will be you know presenting i'll now hand over to to uh, pervez to take you deep into the uh, technical solution pervez thanks ashraf um can you make me the presenter let me see if i yes, can present my your presenter yep All right okay Let me know when you get. Yeah, uh, Pervez, can you see? Ah, uh, yeah, I can see it now. Okay, please do. All right, sorry, so, go the uh, uh, for the for the interruption. Yeah, please go. Ahead. Yeah. Uh, first of all, apologies for the inconvenience. Uh, I guess these are some of the <laughs> effects of working from from home and some internet issues. So I'll, I'll quickly get started without wasting time. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Sayed Parvez. I work for Fortinet as a as a system engineer, and we're going to talk about the SD WAN. Uh, you know what Fortinet, um, uh, you know, is offering in the SD WAN space, and you know how it can help organizations, uh, you know, solve their uh, their their WAN challenges. Yeah. Uh, for our next slide. So if you look at it uh, this is how traditionally the 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 van uh, you know has been uh, you know uh, deployed in organizations right so you have the head office and then you have the branch and the branches are connected to the head office through an mpls link uh, that has traditionally been the, the the way of connecting to the to the head office because of course your all your resources all your private uh, you know data center all your applications and everything is residing in your in your head office so you connect to to, to your head office and then uh, if you want to go out to uh, to internet you know your traffic is going uh, through the head office you just back calling to the to the head office and as we have seen in the last four four or five years you know enterprises have started moving to public cloud you know which could be a saas or iaas or, or you know different types of types of services in public cloud the traffic is still has to go through the uh, to the head office because you know your your full security stack is sitting in the head office i mean traditionally in a branch you just might have a have a router or you know certain organization have started to have have a small firewall over there but traditionally you just have an mpls router and you're connecting to the head office and everything is 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 going through the uh, through the head office so that has traditionally been the architecture uh, um, uh next slide we're going to talk about what are the challenges and issues with this with this kind of an architecture all right so yeah for our next slide So, so the number one issue is obviously the MPLS uh, has been very, very expensive. Although MPLS, you know, gives you the reliability, gives you the quality of service, but it's very expensive, right? And uh, majority of the time, you will have at least two because you want to have some sort of high availability and redundancy. So, if if one MPLS links go links, uh, you know, link goes down, you have another one, right? That results in 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 lot of lot of uh, cost. The second is the poor user experience because now you're moving to cloud. I mean, when you were accessing just the applications which were sitting in the head office, it was fine. 
um, earlier it was expensive. But now because you're moving to the cloud and even to go to the cloud, your traffic is going all the way to the head office and then from there it is moving to the cloud. It results in a lot of uh, poor user experiences and a lot of performance bottleneck, right? So that's, a, that's the second issue. Third issue is obviously, you know, manually uh, operating all those legacy routers, because I mean, if you're just using an NTLS router, uh, most of that it's gonna be configured through CLI, and if you have 100, 200 different branches, you know, there's a lot of complexity in managing those devices through CLIs, right? And last but not the least is obviously the security. I mean, and, and that's, the, that's the whole reason that, you know, organizations have been a little hesitant in, you know, having a local breakout for internet and going directly to the cloud because you have the whole security stack sitting in the, in the data center. You have your firewalls, your IPSs, your, you know, your proxies, your, your sandboxes, you know, whatnot. You have all the security stack over there. Um, and, and you, you know, unless you have that similar kind of a security extended to the branch, you know, nobody wants to just uh, give direct access on the branch, right? So that these are some of the challenges which we typically see organizations are facing. And on next slide, we'll basically talk about how we address those challenges. So Fran, next slide. All right, so that basically sets the stage for SD-WAN, right? And that's, that's how we have you know, seen uh, in, I mean, and, and SD-WAN is not something new. We, we you know, uh, everybody's talking about SD-WAN from the last four to five years, right? So what SD-WAN actually, from a business perspective, you know, what organizations are looking to achieve from an SD-WAN, number one is obviously, obviously simplifying, right? You don't want to have multiple devices. You don't want to have, you know, routers and firewalls and SD-WANs and, you know, three, four different devices sitting in a branch and you, you need to manage them because, of course, I mean, if you have 100, 100 branches, 200 branches or thousands of branches, you don't have IT resources everywhere, right? So how you can simplify that, how you can reduce the number of, of devices, and at the same time, how you can, you know, have security, how you can have better performance for your application, which could be going to your private data center or or a public cloud, right? And obviously to reduce the overall cost because then you have so many devices and, and, and sort of things and you're using MPLS and which is very expensive, end of the day, you know, it, it, it's a lot of money, right? So how you can how you can reduce that. Next slide, Farhan. All right, so just a, just a view from the Gartner that what Gartner thinks a, a, a good SD-WAN solution should have, right? So uh, a good SD-WAN solution should be a lightweight replacement of multiple appliances. So again, when you're looking at an SD-WAN solution, it should not be just adding in at the box because that's what normally happens, right? You have a router, you, you might have a firewall, and okay, now we need an SD-WAN, just add another appliance, right? You know, that typically has been the approach, but what Gartner is saying that it should be a replacement of multiple appliances with, with one single appliance. The second, uh, you know, use case is that it should be application of wear. So when you are having an SD-WAN technology, that SD-WAN technology should be application aware because what you want to do is you want to identify an application layer and you want to do the traffic steering and traffic distribution based on the application, not just based on some source address and destination addresses and all, right? Uh, the third thing is how you can simplify and automate that. So you don't want to just do, you know, play around with, uh, like you typically do in MPLS scenarios that you have static routes and you have defined some routing or policy-based routing and sort of a thing. You know, what you need to do with SD-WAN that it should have an automatic failover. It should have the capability to, you know, monitor the performance of the links and based on that take decisions, right? And last but not the least is obviously to manage security that, you know, it should give you security, not just, not just SD-WAN capabilities. So that's what Gartner thinks. Uh, next slide, Farhan. All right, so let's, uh, let's now take the same example and basically basically see how the SD-WAN uh, using its capabilities can solve those challenges, you know, which, which you typically have having an MPLS, right? So the first thing what SD-WAN can help you is instead of just using two MPLS connection, you can have one normal ADSL broadband kind of a line or a 3G, 4G kind of a connection, and you can use that connection as a backup. So you can still use your MPLS uh, uh, for your, you know, very critical traffic, but now what you're also doing on top of that, because SD-WAN gives you uh, the capability to, you know, monitor the performance of each link, right, in terms of latency, in terms of jitter, in terms of packet loss, right? And if, if it happens to be a scenario that your MPLS is not performing uh, uh, that good or there are some issues on the MPLS link, and if that point of time your, your broadband link is performing, performing better, 
your firewall is intelligent enough to start automatically routing the traffic through an IP sec tunnel, which is obviously built over the uh, over the broadband link, right? So, and when both the links are up, you can you can do load balancing. So now you're utilizing both of those uh, both of those links, right? So that's the first step of of migration. What we see that you know you just you know instead of having two MPNS link, maybe you can just have one, and you can add the secondary link as an as an as an uh, ADSL link. All right. Uh, can you build up the slide, Karan? All right. And the second thing, what the uh, what uh, the SD WAN helps is because you know your your SD WAN or the FortiGate SD WAN solutions they are actually a next generation firewall. So we are not having a, a separate SD WAN device. What typically some other vendors do uh, for FortiGate. Uh, the SD WAN capabilities are built into those 40 gate devices, so they are next generation firewalls. On top of that, we just have the SD WAN capabilities, which is which is just a feature, right? You're not, you know, as as, as a customer, if you already have a 40 gate device, you're not paying any license. You know, you're not you're not buying any additional appliances. It's just a feature on top of our on top of our uh, our device, right? And it has the next gen capability. So now uh, organizations can, you know, um, uh, securely have a local breakout because now you can go to internet directly, you can go to public cloud directly, and, and maintaining the security what you typically have in a in, in a in a data center, right? Instead of backhauling uh, the traffic to your head office and then then going to the cloud. All right. So that's the that's the second use case which which the uh, Fortigear SD WAN can help. Um, next slide, Pran. Yeah, and the, and the last piece of the of the migration is you know once as an organization you are happy with the performance of your ADSL and broadband, what what organizations what we have seen typically do is completely get away from MPLS and have multiple ADSL connections because now what SD WAN is giving you it is giving you link uh, load balancing it is giving you uh, you know the, the the performance what you need it is giving you the it is it is giving you all the uh, you know services uh, uh, you know what you what you would need from uh, uh, from the uh, you know link monitoring perspective from the SLA perspective right so you're having all those capabilities and you're using both those ADSL as 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 redundant links right if one fails the traffic automatically switches over to the other one when both the links are active you can utilize both the links and that basically helps you in reducing a lot of cost because obviously if you compare MPLS and ADSL there is a huge difference in terms of you know uh, the, the the charges you would be paying to your to your ISP right so this is how you know SD WAN can can really help you know organizations migrating from MPLS to the to the traditional I mean from traditional MPLS to the modern connections which could be ADSL which could be you know 3G 4G you know we also have certain devices which gives you the capability to have the sim inserted directly onto the device so you can use those connections also to, to connect to your head office I mean those 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 very remote kind of locations you know you might have that kind of requirement. Uh, next slide Fran. All right. So from the Fortinet perspective, this is what you know Fortinet believes, uh, or this is what the vision of Fortinet is in terms of in, when you when we talk about SD WAN, right? So uh, Farhan, can you build out the slide? Because I think I'll have to keep asking you every five seconds. No worries. No worries. <laughs> So, so to to start with, uh, you know, for Fortinet, SD WAN is not a, is not a, is not a product, right? So we are not like acquiring a, a new company, or we are not selling another appliance to to customers, which which is what typically other other competitors are doing, right? So for us, it's just a feature, it's just a capability which is there on our next generation firewalls, right? So that is the first thing. Second thing, the idea is to basically simplify, right? And when we talk about simplification, you have, you know, things like zero touch provisioning, you have things like orchestration, you have like things like single pane of, uh, of, of management, right? And then what you need to do or what the SD WAN uh, should be able to do is, you know, you need to select the best path. So if you have, you know, one ADSL and one broadband, or if you have two broadband or, or you know, multiple different connections, there should be a capability that you can select the best path, and that best path should be selected not just based on on, on the link uh, speed or something. It should be based on multiple factors. It should look at latency. It should look at jitter. It should look at you know the packet loss. It should keep monitoring all of that. And whichever the link is performing best at that point of time, that should that link should be selected, right? So that's that's what we uh, you know we do, right? 
the and and the and the next very important thing is the application intelligence right you know i mean if you if you still keep doing things based on a source ip and a destination ip and sort of a thing you're still not getting the full value so the app the, the the solution should be uh, application aware so you can take those decisions based on an application right so for example if you have your corporate applications like office 365 salesforce or sap or whatever you know that should get the best best quality of, of of service or that should go through the best available link but if somebody is watching a movie or somebody is you know watching you know going on youtube or or downloading his stuff then you know you should give it uh, the, the the least priority because that's not something which is very productive right so that's where your your application intelligence you know plays a part your quality of service plays a part right and what we are doing on top of it uh, uh, you know uh, uh, on all these things is we are using an overlay networking right so on whether it is an mpls connection whether it is an adsl connection whether it is a 3g connection any kind of a connection we are you know sd wan is working as an as an overlay so it's not some sort of a special interface what you need any kind of an interface can be configured to be used as an as, as an sd wan right so that's what fortinet believes and you know and, and those are the things which you're trying to you know have in our in our solution which you're going to you know talk about a little bit more detail in the next slides uh, farhan can you move to the next slide all right so what do we deliver as a as a solution so that was from a from a very high level architecture point of view from use cases point of view from a business point of view what you're actually the underlying technology uh, what is which is giving you those capabilities of course you know you have these uh, the our fortigate devices which are purpose having a purpose built chip you know that is one of our key differentiator that we just don't use any you know um, uh, 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 you know normal intel kind of a kind of a cpus and processors fortigate design their own chips right so we have purpose built chip which are for sd wan which are for vpn which are for security services so there are dedicated chips which are designed for these purposes and that's why we give give uh, you know a, a performance is much better than our than our competitors right so that's a, that's the platform and obviously you have different various models available depending on the need depending on the size and depending on the scale you're looking at right so that's from the hardware perspective it's available as a hardware it's available as a virtual appliance it's available in the cloud if you want to host it somewhere in the cloud so there are various form factors available right um what you get from the functionality perspective perspective it is 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 what is delivered by our forty os right so you get all the advanced routing capabilities you get the sd wan capabilities you get the next gen firewall capabilities you get the wan optimization capabilities so everything is part of the os so it's not like you know there is a special hardware or a special os for this whether you are having a very small device or whether you are having a big chassis based device the feature and functionality is going to remain same on all on on all our all our devices right and uh, last but not the least is obviously the centralized management i mean if you have 100 devices 500 devices or 500 locations you basically want to have something which can be automated you want something which can be uh, you know managed centrally you get some analytics capability and that's where we have 40 manager which basically helps you in managing everything from a centralized location and again that's available in multiple form factors it could be appliance it could be virtual machine it could be a hosted service so you know you, you, as a customer you get the get the flexibility to choose whatever you know meets your uh, your needs and your requirements all right next slide All right so this is what i was talking about is is uh, you know the the asic right because we have these uh, purpose built asic and that's why we you know we give the better performance because they're designed for this particular sd wan capability right if you just use a, a typical intel based processor is going to is going to do the same thing whether you're using it for uh, you know sd wan or you're using it for something else right there is there is nothing there is no optimize optimization over there but when we design and we have our own chip that gives you a better performance and the next slide is basically is going to highlight that so if you can move to the next slide for han so if you compare our our performance uh, with our competitors whether they are you know swimware or 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 vitella or miraki or of those all of those guys within the same you know uh, bracket or within the same uh, performance and or sorry the, the the same price range you can see the huge difference in terms of performance so if you're they talking about a vpn performance whether you're talking about a next gen firewall performance and i'm just talking about a a very smallest device which is 100f right that gives you you know almost 10 times more performance than any of our competitive products 
and 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 it's not marketing, right? I mean, the number one reason is that we have purpose-built chips. I mean, the 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 chips we are designing is for this particular functionality. I mean, if you use that chip for something else, it might not give you that kind of performance because it is designed to do a, a, a particular functionality, right? And that's where the that's where the difference comes. You know, when we compare our performance with any of the any of our competitors. Next slide, Fran. All right, so let's talk about some of the use cases which you can achieve uh, with the SD WAN or secure SD WAN. Uh, so, so a lot of the other competitors say it's an SD WAN. For Fortinet, it's uh, you know we call it a secure SD WAN because you know we're doing security and SD WAN everything uh, on 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 the same device and the same solution, right? So the number one use case anybody who wants to uh, you know migrate or is looking for an SD WAN solution is you know how you can have a better application performance, you know. Uh, how you can have a local breakout, uh, and you know, if, if the traffic is going to the application which is hosted in a data center, how in, you know how intelligently you can select the link which is going to give you the best quality and the best uh, and, and 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 the least amount of latency, right? So that's something which which uh, SD WAN does. So when you do a look, you have multiple uh, uh, connections. You know, you we are identifying the application. That is the number one thing. And then we are basically looking at whichever the link is performing better, we select that link, right? So that's the number one use case which SD WAN achieves. Uh, the next slide is going to highlight what is the technology and the capability we're using to achieve this use case, yeah? So, for our next slide. All right, so to achieve the, the application uh, you know, uh, experience and, and have a good application experience, so what we are doing is, first thing is the application is sharing, right? So how we do the application is sharing is we do application identification, that what is that particular application on layer 7. Then we do, do the link measurement. So if I have five links part of my SD WAN, then I'm going to select, you know, based on this application, whether it needs low latency or, or, or low jitter or, you know, the highest, highest speed or whatever, I can select that link. And at the same time, it also has the failover capability. So for, for, for any reason, if that link suddenly starts performing, uh, you know, uh, bad or it's, it's, it's not meeting my, my SLA criteria, then it will automatically fall back to the next uh, link, which is now performing better and without dropping the connection. So it, it maintains the session, but it still, you know, uh, uh, can fail over to different links depending on which links is performing better. The second thing what we do is quality of experience. So you have forward error correction, you have packet based steering. So we can, I mean, you can use multiple links and you can load balance the traffic through multiple links. And that is not just based done on session, that is also done on packet, right? So, um, uh, and, and then you obviously have flexible SLAs. When you define those SLAs, you're monitoring, uh, you know, what kind of what kind of SLA you want for that particular traffic. And this is something my colleague is, is, is going to demonstrate in the, in the demo as well, right? And then, you know, we have segmentations. So if you want to do multi-tenancy, you can do multi-tenancy. If, if, and, and, uh, you know, on top, uh, on, on all these, uh, uh, you know, things, you're using a VPN as an, as, a, as an overlay, right? So everything is secured. And if you happen to have a, a kind of a huge organization where you have lots of branches, what we also do is we have dynamic VPN. What it means is if you need to have a uh, spoke-to-spoke -spoke connectivity, we can support automatic establishment of a tunnel, right? So you don't have to create those VPN tunnels across uh, kind of a full mesh all the time. It can happen automatically whenever there is a need. So, and that is something we call as, as, as using, using uh, doing the dynamic VPN. Next slide, Fran. All right. So the second use case which you can solve from the uh, from the SD WAN is you know how you can be ready for the cloud, right? Because as as we discussed in the first slide, the biggest problem today is when the organizations are moving to the to the cloud, they are still going through the data center, which you don't want. So you want to have that uh, going directly to the cloud. But the problem was having not having enough security, right? So now with the with the next gen firewall capabilities built in into our SD WAN. We solve that issue, right? So now organizations can, you know, be, uh, uh, go to the to the cloud and SaaS applications directly. And um, the uh, can you go to the next slide, Farhan? Yeah. And to achieve that use case, you know, from the security perspective, and to make those branches connecting directly to the cloud, 
these are the capabilities of Citroën, right? So, you know, we're talking about threat prevention. So all our next, you know, firewalls and next generation firewalls, they have the IPS capabilities, they have the URL filtering capabilities, they have the application control capabilities, you know, whether you're talking about, you know, having an on-prem sandbox or a cloud sandbox or having, you know, uh, detecting, you know, botnet kind of, kind of communication, right? Uh, encrypted traffic visibility. That's that's really really important because you know today your know, 70 to 80 percent of traffic is is encrypted, and unless you're doing SSL inspection, you might be missing a lot of lot of you know bad stuff. You might be missing a lot of malware, right? And we are the only you know one of the only solutions which are uh, you know supporting TLS 1.3 because TLS 1.3 is the latest version, and a lot of vendors are still you know, uh, you know, not supporting TLS 1.3, they're still on TLS 1.2, right? So that's also very important that, you know, your latest, uh, you know, TLS versions are supported when you're looking at the security in SD-LAN solution. And obviously, you know, you have, you know, um, uh, integration with the cloud. So we have integration with most of the cloud providers. And we, you know, we also recently rele- uh, released, um, you know, a use case where you can have cloud-to-cloud cloud connectivity and you can do an SD-LAN between cloud-to-cloud, cloud, right? So you have, we have integrations with Azure, we have integrations with AWS and, and, and similar kind of, kind of providers, right? On top of that, we also have a solution which is, uh, which is, you know, helping you in doing shadow IT and shadow data discovery, which is called 40 CASPI, right? Now, today, when, when the organizations are moving to the SaaS or moving to the cloud, the biggest challenge they have is they don't have visibility of what's happening in the SaaS. Because the SaaS application is, it can be accessible from anywhere from any device, right? I mean, somebody having an account on, on, on OneDrive can upload files from Office and he can go home and he can download those files on his home laptop. You know, how are you going to get visibility of that, right? So that's where you need something which is integrating with your SaaS applications and giving you the complete visibility of your shadow IT and, and, and uh, shadow data kind of, kind of issues. Right. Uh, next slide, Fran. And uh, third use case um, is obviously we talked about how we can simplify and how we can automate that. So you know when when we talk about simplification and automation, you know we, you you talk about like how we can have a centralized management. You know all this, you know uh, multiple branches should should be should be managed centrally. That's number one. And second is you know, we should have some sort of a, you know, zero touch provisioning because you can't have resources, you can't have, cannot have IT people going and visiting each and every branch and, 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 and kind of uh, configuring and deploying those, those, those devices, right? And of course, you know, uh, you know, you should have some sort of analytics and some sort of reporting which can give you that how well your branches have been performing, how well your links have been performing over the period of time, right? So how we achieve this use case is through, you know, various different, um, you know, capabilities we have in our solution. Uh, for our next slide. Yeah, right. So first is the centralized management. So as I said, we have our 40 manager, which helps you doing the centralized management. So all the SD-WAN related policies, all the next-gen firewall-related policies, everything you know is managed from one central location. So if you have 100 branches, you don't have to manage all of them, uh, all of them manually. Uh, or, or you know, individually, you basically have one single console to manage everything. The second thing is analytics and reporting. So the the forty manager has inbuilt analytics and reporting capabilities, which is kind of very helpful for knock and soft team because they want to keep monitoring how the links are performing, how the how the uh, you know applications are, uh, you know, the the SLAs are met or not, what kind of you know things things are happening, and it gives you a historical view as well, right? The, uh, the the third thing which which comes into the orchestration is obviously the zero touch provisioning that how we can how we can do zero touch provisioning right so we're going to talk about that in the in the next slide and then we also have a lot of uh, you know compliance based reporting available as well which you know if you have some you know best practices to be followed by you know PCI HIPAA those are you know compliance based reports available in in, in that uh, you know in in the solution as well uh, next slide Ron. All right, so that's, I mean, these are just some of the screenshots for on. We can script through this. Uh, this is just talking about the, uh, I mean, uh, the 40 manager capabilities that are, you know, what kind of monitoring dashboards and sort of things we have. So we can skip through, skip through these slides. Uh, let's get to the, you know, the, the extended. Um, yep, let's skip through this, skip through this. We have, I mean, uh, yeah. 
So you want to focus on the zero touch. Uh, so this is what you know one of the another use case uh, when we talk about. Oh, it's moving too fast. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So I mean, I just wanted to highlight on the zero touch because that's something which is really important. Uh, so what happens on you know what for uh, you know what Fortinet offers in that space is you have something called as Fortinet Deploy. So what we do is when you when you need to ship the device, the devices are you know kind of pre uh, you know uh, registered, and you just ship the device to wherever look wherever the location you want to, and somebody just has to power on the device and connect the device you know just do a physical cabling, and what happens that this, these devices will automatically connect to uh, a forty deploy, and forty deploy will basically tell them that where your forty manager is located and basically give you the IP address and and and, and those details. And from there on, Forty Manager takes care. Forty Manager pushes all the configuration, whether you have Forty Gates, Forty Switch, Forty APs, whatever the devices you have been, you know, have have been shipped over there, and everything comes automatically up and you know gets up and running. Configurations are pushed, everything is connected and uh, is 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 ready to go. Right. So that's what zero touch provisioning is, and you know that's that's how it can help reduce you know complexity and 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 reduce some cost as well. Next slide, Fran. All right, so that I mean, those are all the you know use cases from uh, 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 you know what you can achieve. Obviously, there are a lot, lot more. You you know we can't talk about each and every one of them in in in, in this one hour uh, you know session. But of course, I mean, if if, if somebody is interested, we can obviously you know have uh, have them you know discuss uh, later on in 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 more detail. But that's what we we normally you know you can achieve on a high level, right? uh just a brief on you know fortinet fortinet has been obviously the you know the uh, the uh, the leader in the in the cybersecurity space and you know we have you know been there in the market for 20 years and we just don't do uh, you know uh, uh, firewalls we talk about the whole fabric you know we are leaders and recommended by nss in uh, in firewall market in email security whether you talk about wrap whether you talk about endpoint whether you talk about edr whether you talk about load balancing whether you talk about secure web gateway so we basically talk about from a from a fabric perspective right and when it comes to sd van we already have 21000 customers globally right so, you know sd van is the fastest growing market uh, that's number one and it's the fastest growing revenue from uh, you know for Fortinet as well right and you know uh, we are you know uh, recognized by Gartner we are recommended by NSS lab so we can share those those details you can go to our Fortinet website and you can you know find those Gartners and NSS lab reports as well on our on our website all right next slide for on yeah yeah so let's just quickly Quickly uh, cover this up, and then I'll I'll hand it over to Zafa so he can run through the uh, 3D demo. Uh, how long we have? Or we have already over time. A bit over time. Uh, All right. So do you want to skip through the SD branch and uh, uh, jump to the demo? You can cover. You know, if uh, you know. Sure. Let Let's go through it just in quickly in two minutes. All right, so we talked about we talked about you know the SD van, right? And that's typically where majority of our competitors play, uh, you know, with with their typical dedicated SD van solution. You know, what Fortinet did is we kind of evolved this from SD van to a secure SD van. So when you just go with our FortiGate solution, you are having a secure SD van. So it gives you security plus SD van. But that's a, that's a transformation at the van edge, right? How about if we can extend that transformation from van to LAN? I mean that is something you you know you know organizations are looking at in a in 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 a in, in a long term right and that is something we as as Fortinet are kind of leading the way and we are you know one of the only vendors who have extended that secure SD WAN capabilities into a secure SD branch capabilities right so how we do it um, can Farhan can you go to the next slide. All right. So the first thing we do is obviously you have the secure SD van, uh, you know, with our 40 gate devices. What we do on top of that is we can add our 40 switches. And once we add the 40 switches, they become part of the 40 gate. So it's not like you're managing those switches as an independent devices. They basically become an extension 
of our of our firewall itself because i mean if you have a branch you might have you know uh, laptops desktops you might have printers you might have cameras you might have access points and they need some sort of a physical connectivity and typically what you have is you might have a switch from a different vendor which you're managing it maybe you know in, individually or maybe centrally if you have some centralized management what what it gets does it basically you know removes that complexity as well and you know uh, consolidate you know multiple vendors and you know having a skilled people to 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 manage those 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 different different platforms right so that's number one and the second thing what we do farhan can you build on this slide So, so that's how we extend the secure SD WAN into a secure access by having uh, the the um, uh, the 40 switch, and then on top of that, if you need to have a wireless connectivity, we have 40 APs, and then we you know once you connect these 40 APs to the switch, they are automatically discovered, and you are managing the full wireless capability as well from the centralized management console. So now you have one centralized management console which is managing your full stack of WAN. SD WAN, next gen firewalls, switching capabilities, and wireless capabilities. And that's how, you know, in the long run, Fortinet, you know, the, the, the vision of Fortinet is to basically transform the whole WAN and LAN into one single consolidated solution. And on top of that, what you can do is if you're looking at a zero trust uh, secure access solution, which is we're talking about NAC. What FortiGate devices do, they also act as uh, as a sensor for NAC. So you don't have to deploy those NAC appliances in each and every branch because our FortiGate devices can act as a sensor, right? Farhan, uh, can you build on the slide? That next slide basically talks about the NAC thing. All right. So that's that's how the I mean the the uh, we use a proprietary link or proprietary protocol called Forty Link, uh, which basically helps us discovering and managing our Fortinet devices. So from the firewall you have a Forty switch which is connected, and from the Forty switch you have the APs connected. And what you see as an administrator is one single device. I mean you are not managing your APs individually, you're not managing the switches individually. Everything is managed from one single one single console. Next slide, Fran. All right, uh, that, that's the NAC piece we talked about. So, you know, from the secure access, you can extend that to uh, to zero trust access, where you can have a NAC solution integrated with the with this whole fabric, and uh, your 40 gig devices can act as an NAC sensor. Next slide, please. I think that's basically the last slide. Should be the last slide. Yeah. Oh. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank. You. Thanks a lot, and again, apologies, guys, for all those inconveniences and, and interruptions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pavel. Thank you for a very wonderful presentation. Uh, I'll, I'll now hand over to Josefa, who can, you know, uh, show you a quick demo. Josefa? Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Thank you, Farhan. Yeah. And thank you, Pavel, for the session. I'll just try sharing my screen. Shows that is shared. Let me know if you are able to see anything. Yes, Josefa, I can see a screen. Yes, we can see. Uh, you can see my screen. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, just just confirm because uh, I am out from that uh, Zoho. Yes. Uh, can so see can you see the topology here? Yeah. Okay. Perfect, guys. Uh, okay. So once again, uh, I know we are running a little bit late. So uh, I will try to uh, wrap it as soon as possible uh, in possibly 10 minutes or so. So just, uh, uh, you know, bear with us, guys. Apologies due to some, uh, you know, work from home situation and the connectivity issues. It's We are just running a little bit behind. So uh, just to give an overview about the setup, uh, we have a few systems uh, in our uh, demo setup. We have a local 40 gate. Uh, then we have uh, a local Windows system. So uh, the Windows system connects to the uh, local FortiGate as uh, you know, uh, as its local uh, gateway. So whatever traffic uh, generates from local Windows goes to the gateway that is the local FortiGate. 
and local 48 connects to the Linux, which uh, in our case, the Linux machine is just acting as an internet router. Uh, then uh, on the other end of the Linux router, we have a remote 40 gate and, uh, uh, you know, we have a remote windows connecting to the remote 40 gate. Okay. So only change uh, uh, here. Uh, we also have a 40 manager. Okay. To centrally manage all our 40 gates. So only uh, change in this particular diagram is for this setup. What I have done, if you on the remote 40 gate, you can see two WAN interfaces, port four and port five. So just to show the SD-WAN capabilities, I've just added port five on local 40 gate itself. Okay. And from uh, there is also a VPN running from local 40 gate to the remote 40 gate simulating a branch and head office kind of scenario. So I'll take you to the console. Now, uh, configuring SD-WAN is uh, pretty easy. It's just three simple steps. So on all the 40 gates, you will see uh, the option of SD-WAN under uh, network and SD-WAN. So the first step you have to do is go to SD-WAN, okay, and enable the SD-WAN interface. So per firewall or per VROM, uh, you can have only one SD-WAN interface. In that SD-WAN interface, you can have multiple physical, uh, you know, uh, VPN interfaces. When when I say physical, you can have any type of WAN interfaces. You can have uh, ADSL links, MPLS links, modems. We already saw that in the presentation. So uh, I have uh, three WAN links added, port 1, port 2, and port 5. As I mentioned, I took port 5 from the remote 40 gate and added to the local 40 gate. Okay. And I also have added uh, an in, uh, a VPN uh, set up a VPN interface, a remote internet, which connects to the remote 40 gate. Okay. And um, in the same tab, you can also see uh, the SD-WAN usage monitor, uh, very, very useful. So here you can see the bandwidth volume sessions. Okay. You can see uh, the pie chart based on volume, based on bandwidth, based on sessions. Okay. The distribution of uh, sessions, the distribution of bandwidth across all the SD-WAN member interfaces, okay? So here, uh, when even, uh, to add a interface, it's pretty straightforward. You just select the interface, add the gateway, that's it, we are done. Now next, the second step is to set performance SLAs. Performance SLAs are nothing but your health check monitors and parameters or thresholds, okay? So, uh, you can have, you, uh, all organizations have certain destinations, certain applications which are critical for their businesses, right? So we just have to identify that and we have to just select that uh, as our destination, as our, uh, you know, application in order to uh, add performance SLAs on top of that. So here I'm showing an example, uh, uh, you know, of a performance SLA. So I've named it as business critical apps and for particip uh, for servers, I'm pinging office.com and salesforce.com to check the connectivity, to check how much latency uh, I'm getting, how many packet loss I'm getting to reach office.com or salesforce.com via uh, these participants. So I've added all available four uh, uh, SD-WAN interface members. I'm saying I want to monitor uh, the performance for office.com and salesforce.com over all the interfaces. Now, SLA targets, I have, uh, I have mentioned it as 100. So if any link, either port 1, port 2, or port 5, goes over 100 milliseconds to reach office.com or salesforce.com, it, it will be considered to be outside my performance SLA, and it will not be considered as a best quality link, okay, suitable for handling that traffic, okay? So similarly, uh, I can show other... Uh, there is IASs, that is uh, public cloud. So I have aws.amazon.com, azure.microsoft.com. I'm monitoring that. And for here, I set the latency as 150. Okay. So uh, different, different destinations, uh, you know, uh, you can just play around with the latency with the SLA targets, uh, you know, more critical, uh, more critical applications, more critical destinations should have a lower latency. Okay. So here you can see, uh, uh, as soon as you add the performance SLA, you will see the results here that to reach office.com, salesforce.com, 
uh, latency from port 1 is 36 milliseconds port 2 is 36 again for from the vpn interface it is 38 milliseconds so uh, once we are done with the performance SLAs, the last thing left is to do uh, uh, the sd wan rules okay so here we are just it, it's just a sort of a firewall policy okay here you select the source address here you can select the destination address or internet service so internet service is a database of uh, known cloud services it's a database which comprises of ip addresses port and protocol of all the known uh, uh, you know cloud services in the world then we have our application database so you can select uh, isdbs uh, internet service databases that is then you can select application the last uh, in sd wan rules is selecting the strategy whether you want to select best quality, lowest cost, or maximize bandwidth. Best quality and lowest cost is selecting one particular link for a particular destination, whereas maximize bandwidth is, uh, you can say it is load balancing. Okay, here, best quality and lowest cost will be uh, considered, uh, you know, only to select a particular link, the best link out of all the available uh, destinations. Uh, in interfaces. So here we have selected the interface, two interfaces to handle our Microsoft Office 365 and Salesforce traffic. We have selected that our interface preference is port 2. And if port 2 is not uh, good enough, then shift the traffic to remote internet. Okay, so our first preference in the order is port 2. Maximize bandwidth, it will start load balancing. Manual is pretty straightforward. I am not considering any performance SLAs. I don't care about SLAs. I just want that, uh, you know, this particular destination should always go out via one particular link. So manually, I am selecting, okay, for Office 365, go to WAN1, go to WAN2. Don't look at any uh, other SLAs or anything. Don't do dynamic. It's manual, okay? So uh, here we have it. Uh, I'll show the IASS one as well. So here you can see it's set as maximized bandwidth. Now uh, I'll just show an example here. So here you saw for business critical apps, Salesforce and uh, Office, 3, uh, Office 365, uh, it's supposed to go to uh, port 2 first. So we'll, as per our rules, we'll just go to few destinations. Okay, so we have gone to salesforce.com, outlook.office365.com. We'll just refresh our uh, forward traffic log. And here you can see, okay, for Salesforce, for Microsoft Outlook, you can see that, uh, the, de uh, that the destination interface selected is port 2, okay? So the destination is selected is port two. I'll just refresh it again to see more logs. Okay, so here you can see uh, msftauth.net. Okay, so here you can see this is Microsoft authentication. Everything is going via port two. You can see the remote internet, but it is for other traffic. So of course, it's not only uh, the things that we have added into our sd wan rules, we have other traffic flowing as well, right? So we, we are not considering that particular uh, traffic at this moment. We are focused on the Microsoft and Salesforce traffic. So we can see it's going out via port 2. Now, uh, uh, we'll just introduce, and see, we'll try to simulate a real world scenario where the latency of uh, one link goes high. So we'll see if it shifts to the uh, next uh, best link. So I've introduced a 500 uh, millisecond latency on port two via our internet uh, router. Okay, so I will just take you back to our SD-WAN performance SLA monitoring. And here you can see it's gone red. You can see that the port two is now not within our SLA targets, so it should so it should not be considered as the best link, and it is not suitable for handling traffic. Okay, as per our SD WAN rules and as per our as per our performance SLAs. I'll just uh, close uh, the ongoing sessions.
Okay, hopefully there is nothing cached or something. So we might, uh, we should see uh, the traffic going through our VPN interface via our head office. Okay. So and salesforce.com. Okay. So we'll go back again to our logs. Okay. Now, within a minute or something, we should see that uh, the traffic is slowly shifting to remote internet. You can see, okay, these are all uh, going via Ak Akamai, so it's a CDN, okay, which might be handling traffic. Yeah. See, now you're seeing less and less, uh, you know, traffic going to port two and everything is shifting. We are just uh, looking for our, uh, you know, focus traffic. Uh, here, here, I think we have got already got it. So here you can see Salesforce is now shifted to a remote INT because for Salesforce and Microsoft Office 365, now port 2 is no longer uh, uh, the best interface. We'll also just go to aws.amazon.com and Azure to see the load balancing. Now, uh, there were three interfaces selected for this particular traffic that were port 1, port 2, and port 5. Okay, now we'll quickly just go to our logs. Okay, now you can see uh, we are seeing some traffic uh, for Microsoft Azure from port five. Okay, and uh, Microsoft CDN from port one. Okay, AWS from port five. Okay, and port one. Now I. Here, I want to highlight one uh, very important thing, okay? Usually, if you know in firewall, the load balancing is session-based. Now, this three three particular logs are very, very important. Here, we are doing packet-based load balancing. So, here you can see the source is same. The destination, IP, URL, everything is same. So, even for the same source, same destination, we are still load balancing it. So, our SD-WAN is a true packet-based SD-WAN. So here, this, I wanted to highlight this in the logs. And fortunately, uh, you know, we are able to see that in the logs as well, considering the amount of entries uh, that are there. So it's it's very unique. And if, uh, if I just, uh, uh, you know, uh, disable the latency, okay, it, it should be back again. Uh, the performance SLA should be back to normal. Okay, it will. It has reduced and it is now back to normal. Okay, so this was uh, uh, you know uh, showcasing the dynamic uh, failover, and one of the use cases was centralized management, single pane of glass management. So just a couple of minutes, I uh, and we are done. I will just showcase the forty manager here. Okay, so here we have the device manager. Okay, where uh, from where you can manage the uh, multiple manage multiple devices centrally. No need to log in on to individual uh, devices. If you notice here, we have the SD WAN tab. Okay, so you can do the SD WAN configuration for all your devices centrally. You can manage SD WAN from a central location. Okay. Uh, I can also create the SD-WAN template for the new device, which is Remote FortiGate. I can configure it from scratch as well and deploy it from here. Okay, and consider if you have like hundred devices, so uh, you know the Forti Manager makes it very very easy for you to manage SD-WAN uh, to manage your FortiGate devices or all your firewall devices centrally from a single console. 
You can also monitor your SD-WAN performance SLAs, uh, you know, and all your connected devices. Right now, we only have uh, one device uh, with SD-WAN enabled, so it shows here in the map where it is located. So I'll just zoom out. Okay. So guys who are not from the UAE, we were on present on the Sheikh Zayed Road. Okay. So you can see we are there in UAE in Dubai. Okay. If you have multiple locations, multiple geographical locations, you can see all devices connected to each other. Okay. And we also have a table view, a good uh, view to showcase all the member interfaces and their health. Okay, so here you can see for Amazon AWS, we are selecting, we have selected three interfaces, port one, port two, and port five, and all of them are green, means all of them are healthy. Citrix and GoToMeeting, we have selected as manual. We'll ex we have selected the strategy as manual, so it's not monitoring the performance SLAs for Citrix and GoToMeeting, and similarly for Microsoft, that is port 2 and remote internet, which we just uh, verified and just checked in the logs. The last thing is the SOC dashboards of uh, 40 Manager and 40 available on 40 Manager as well as 40 Analyzer. Very important, so it showcase, uh, showcases the top threats. So here you can see uh, uh, if any malware was caught, if any malicious websites were visited, malicious uh, or high-risk applications were accessed. Okay. We also have different monitors. We have the device status monitor, okay. Uh, for remote 40 gate, I'll go to the local 40 gate. It shows uh, the connectivity is up, the license information, the configuration status, uh, the threat dashboard as well. So top threats in the last one day, okay. And of course, uh, right now it's a demo environment. We just have one source, so. Uh, the amount of logs will be less, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, in real world scenario, just, uh, you know, even with 10, 15 uh, sources, we will see a huge amount of uh, logs and, and this particular, all particular uh, widgets and dashboards will be highly populated. So here it's a very nice threat destination view to see how, from where uh, did, this, did the threats originate. Okay, very important. So guys, uh, uh, that's it from my end. I uh, am hopeful that it was helpful, the short demo that we had prepared for you guys. Okay. Thank you guys uh, from my end. I think Farhan or Bindya can take over from here. Thank you, everyone. Thanks to the CNS team and thanks to the Fortunate team as well. Thanks again. Have a great evening.